uh, today's podcast is going to be going a little, a little bit of a different route, and we're going to be talking about Jose Rizal. Uh, but before we get to that, we're going to be going and asking people to please donate to my Patreon page. That's www.patreon.com slash challenge history. We have tiers at uh, $1, $10, $25, $50, and $100. $50 will have, uh, once we hit a threshold of enough people, uh, a giveaway of a, a silver Roman Empire coin, and the $100 will have a uh, giveaway of a uh, Byzantine Empire uh, gold coin. Now that's going to be, those are uh, solid coins, uh, solid all the way through. That's uh, pure silver or pure gold. And those are from those empires, both uh, Roman for the $50 uh, level and uh, Roman Empire for the $50 level and Byzantine Empire for the $100 level for those who are interested. And uh, the $25 level, $10 level, and the base $1 level will uh, add on uh, giveaways once I kind of uh, get some people in there. It'll have to be hired numbers of people at those levels and uh if you read this you'll see that i'm on disability uh i'm also putting the stuff to uh the uh podcast as well to help with equipment currently with them I'm, I'm on some uh, just some basic equipment with a uh uh with a uh small format mixer I want to get a little bit more of a, uh, eventually when, if I can get some people in, uh, I can get some, uh, better stuff for that. And, uh, I'm using a dynamic microphone. So if I can go up to a better microphone, that would actually help as well for the audio quality. It's not bad with it, but if I can help the audio, audio quality, that would actually help the, uh, quality of the uh podcast as well and then uh eventually i can probably go to a better software or later on down the road if i need any better uh equipment and then obviously getting a better webcam down the road i'm just using essentially a cheap hd webcam that i have uh modern on top of my pc and uh that that's what it would go toward uh, as well as obviously personal costs as well me being in a disability you'll see that information if you go to the actual page now uh for today's thing we're going over jose rizal basically he was a uh 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 political leader and author essentially uh when it comes to the his uh, novels, they were essentially done in the format of uh, fiction, but uh, did have a lot of uh, impact uh, in uh, in the way of Ayn Rand, in the way that he did that. We're not going to go over Ayn Rand right now with it, uh, probably in the uh, near future, uh, but essentially... Uh, will show that uh that uh what he was but he was a little more than just that he was actually also uh an ophthalmologist as well in addition to just being an author a lot of people didn't realize realize this and this meant that he was an eye surgeon in addition to just being an author a lot of people thought he was just an author and uh and an actual uh uh Philippine Patriot and uh, most people did not realize this and uh, I think and basically what he was pushing for was essentially what many of what the people in the United States uh, were pushing for when these when we were having separation with the uh, British he merely wanted more uh, essentially at first uh, the actual freedom of uh, assembly and expression and equal uh, equality. He wanted to essentially 
uh, basically have rights with it that the uh, uh, Spaniards were essentially uh, violating. Now, in the case of the United States, they were, uh, in comparison, they were having their Fourth Amendment rights violated, and in this case with it is they were having their freedom of expression and assembly violated. And uh, it goes very, very similar. And we can essentially put the points of uh, much of the early founders uh, in very much in the same light. But we can also put in, uh, if we look at some of the points of view with his uh, El uh, Phil, uh, Bust, uh, Bustimo uh, book, it really has uh, a lot uh, to do with it's very, very similar with uh, Rand Paul's book, Government Bullies, even though this book had a lot to do with uh, was actually written as an actual book that was about uh, uh, an actual uh, it was actually a novel and meaning it's actually fiction it was really uh, this was really about uh, going uh, against the government uh, against uh, government tax collecting and uh, uh, abusive rule well, if you look at the idea of uh, Rand Paul's book, uh, Government Bullies, it's on the idea of Americans being har harassed, abused, and imprisoned by the federal, by the federal government. And it's merely, uh, it's merely almost a duplicate just from the idea of actual taking, actually taking it from a, uh, a nonfiction point of view. And when we start to look at some of the ideas of uh, of the two, is uh, Rand Paul uh, Rand Paul's perspective is to advocate for the sanctity of life, uh, energy security, uh, balancing the nation's budget, expanding uh, economic opportunity, fixing broken justice system, promoting opportunity for education, promoting gun rights, uh, protecting. Uh, Privacy and civil liberties, promote uh, putting patients first, uh, reforming uh, Washington through term limits, uh, reversing burdens and regulations, uh, securing our nation, supporting our nation's heroes, and uh, and basically uh, removing waste in government. Well, if you start to look at Jose Rizal, you're going to notice that he would have had a lot of those views, and. Uh, you might go well. Uh, what would if he have had when it comes down to the uh, uh, idea of patience? Well, when we realize what the jobs they had, you would have actually realized that uh, Rand Paul and uh, Jose Rizal actually had the same exact job. Both were ophthalmologists and both actually have a supreme love of their country and both actually wanted the idea of uh, liberty for their own people and did not want to actually have some other controlling force over their own people and put liberty above that and they actually wrote about that and uh, while in the case when we start to look over Jose Rizal it ended up leading to him being exiled and eventually being executed. Well, when we start to look at some of the radical people against Rand Paul, we realize that um, in the case of him is, uh, well, we see there was a case where he was shot at we, by an actual radical person who believed in government control this was at the baseball shooting that took place in uh, 2017. We see that uh, in also 2017, we see that he was attacked by his neighbor, who was another uh, radical person on the left who believed in government control, and that basically he was uh, also threatened by an axe murderer, uh, that not only him, his also family. And that person was arrested by the Capitol Police. Now, if we start to look at that, um, 
I think without those actual people protecting him. Now when we start to look at the actual case of uh, Jose Rizal, Jose Rizal did not have that benefit because he was essentially considered to be uh, hated by his own government to such a level that he didn't even have a position in the government to actually have that benefit. Now if he would have actually had that uh, benefits is uh, he would have had a uh, the ability to do this. Now he was uh, now he is listed as the uh, founder of Liga uh, Filipina, uh, Filipina uh, which is uh, if we start to look is uh, which is basically a non-violent uh, uh, reform party which essentially is, was trying to get the actual reforms itself, which is what ended up getting him to basically be essentially this, uh, essentially hated by uh, the Spanish government. Well, when we start to look at Rand Paul, well, while he wasn't the founder, he's essentially a major piece of the uh, major uh, member of the Tea Party movement. Now, who is essentially the one that's kind of the grandfather of the Tea Party movement? You'd have to go to Rand Paul's father, who is an uh, Obagine doctor, uh, Ron Paul. And he's essentially kind of the father of the Tea Party movement itself. And so it kind of goes into the same idea. Now, when we're going to people who are essentially murdered for the actual points of... Uh, going uh, against essentially the government, we can actually compare him also to Thomas More or Sir Thomas More as he's, Sir Thomas More or St. Thomas More as he's also known. Uh, essentially, uh, he was beheaded for refusing to accept uh, King Henry VIII as the head of the Church of England. Uh, and this was, uh, he ended up basically uh, uh, using the point of uh, of essentially uh, essentially being found guilty of uh, sedition just as uh, just as well in the same case because of this, and he essentially stated that uh, uh, in his cases uh, can the uh, can the king uh, dec uh, can uh, can the act of parliament. Uh, declare the uh, earth is flat uh, or or I believe it it's goes as can, uh, can the act of parliament uh, declare the earth is uh, flat or can, uh, or can it declare the uh, earth is round and, and regardless either way and the fact is is uh, is they knew that the answer was no and uh, it uh, if the earth was flat can, can they uh, declare it as round or or if the earth was round can they declare can they declare it as flat? And they knew that what it called the answer was no. And he knew that either way, it didn't matter that he was going to be executed either way. And that was the whole point. He wanted to basically make his argument for uh, natural rights. And this was the whole point. And uh, he wanted to essentially prove this point. And... Uh, uh, once he proved this point with it, uh, he knew, uh, regardless of, uh, it didn't matter what was going to happen, but he knew, uh, it didn't matter what he stated there, that he was essentially going to be found guilty no matter what he stated. Just in, uh, very much, uh, the same case that Jose Rizal just basically said, uh, last farewell, uh, on his execution, he knew it didn't matter what he stated. And here he knew that what it called, he had already made his uh, his case for uh, for natural rights in his actual uh, in his actual uh, statements before uh, when they were going to execute him. He didn't. Uh, he knew that it didn't really matter, and he knew that it had already been uh, basically the statements had already been made. And that he merely wanted, uh, all he was looking for was basically, was the actual uh, uh, natural rights basically being given to Filipinos uh, equally. 
and uh, he knew that, that that was not going to happen. And uh, when we start to look at his history, we can see that uh, it kind of mimics within kind of a realm of what we t tend to see in some of our uh, people that we uh, tend to view uh, in the West as uh, some of our biggest uh, patriots. And uh, what he was actually fighting for was actually against the uh, Spanish ownership of uh, and uh, the uh, Spanish ownership of the nation because it was no different than the uh, British ownership of the uh, United States and it was considered to be tyrannical in the way it was formed and if we start to look at that we can see that and they essentially tried to uh, and with what he was doing, he did not want any, uh, he was never using any violence. And it's the same point as, and uh, this is where we can uh, use the point of uh, Rand Paul. Rand Paul has never advocated, nor any group as he's, he's been associated with, has ever advocated for any violence. And yet he's had violence advocated against him. And on multiple occasions. And this is something that's, uh, that Rand Paul almost uh, almost died. I mean, he had uh, broken ribs and essentially, uh, I believe, one uh, punctured his uh, lung. Word uh, were uh, were up doing some serious damage. Where he, or I don't know if it punctured the lung or, or if he had been fluid in the lung, where he ended up having uh, pneumonia from it. And uh, we're talking; these are some serious problems with he ended up being shot at. Where he, where if he didn't uh, get behind a barrier, he could have been killed. And we're talking that this is basically what we're taught is very, very similar. And when we, while it's not necessarily going to be the government because he is actually a government official in his current status, it's we're talking that we have a serious situation that's uh, where we have where we can declare as a serious situation that. People that actually believe in liberty are actually uh, are usually the ones that tend to actually have the most danger on their lives, because it's not a very difficult situation to believe in tyranny, as we've seen in history. I mean, uh, Jose Rizal could have easily taken a job as uh, just be, uh, just dealing with tyranny and uh, supporting the status quo and uh, and basically be uh, continuing as an eye surgeon and lived a very very uh, happy and content life but he he basically because of his ethics knew he could not sustain that he himself could not sustain basically uh, becoming uh, basically sitting around doing that I can guarantee you that basically he probably had the same type of attitude of being maybe a little more aggressive like uh, Rand Paul is and couldn't sit around doing nothing and he didn't want to basically uh, now obviously we couldn't we can't guarantee that but I think with what he did and doing a lot more than just uh, becoming an eye surgeon and being that productive uh, when he died at the age of 35 I think we can pretty much uh, guarantee you that uh, he was very, very active in his life and was not going to just be content with uh, doing that little. And we can see that he was, uh, we could pretty much guarantee that he was that uh, feverish in uh, defending liberty. And I think uh, it's something that we need to consider here as uh, something that needs to be very, very uh, important in what we do in this country because I believe that we've gotten very, very lazy in this country when we've uh, thought about liberty in this country. We basically have gotten this idea of, oh, but we need security. No, there's no idea of security 
because when you start to make that argument for security over liberty, there's never going to be any security coming. That's only a promise of security, and that promise is never going to come. The only uh, because we know that the most secure places on Earth are, are in the, or actually in our country are maximum security prisons. If you want mac, if you want security, get yourself into a maximum security prison. Try killing a bunch of people. That'll get you into a maximum security prison. You can have all the security you can ever dream of. But guess what? You're going to have no rights. If you want, uh, if you want actual freedom, you're going to have to have to deal with risk, and there's going to be a, a risk with every decision you make, and. This is what people want. People, want, if you want freedom and liberty, you're going to have to deal with risk out there. But the fact is, is we can actually, uh, if we're willing to actually deal peacefully with one another, we can mitigate a lot of that risk when we basically uh, don't try to force one another to do something. Eliminating all of this force can actually do this when we're saying when we're not trying to say we want free stuff, and this is why we're we're doing this and uh that you're not going to have essentially uh that's uh we're not going to create uh uh we're not going to create uh a situation to where we end up repeating where we end up uh leading a bunch of uh people that are trying to help out and gain more liberty for individuals and lead them to their deaths. If you want to actually get less death, you need to go more liberty. And that's the whole point. And when we have people like Jose Rizal that have actually fought and died for it, don't just let them die in vain. Uh, continue uh, their... Uh, their work by actually fighting for liberty do it on your own with it try to uh convince uh you try to convince a couple other people to fight for liberty and eventually with it you want to be fighting against your own government because your government is naturally going to want more and more power now there's there's going to be so many figures out there in history that actually fight for liberty and if you want to actually be remembered in history make sure that you're fighting for liberty fighting for tyranny it's not a way to be remembered in history because you're going to be remembered very, very poorly. And that's the way you, you end up doing it because otherwise you're going to be remembered as a nobody. And that's why I think this, this is important. While this is a, a foreign figure, there's plenty of, of domestic figures that are out there in modern day, uh, uh, in the modern day to even uh, throughout historic times. There are plenty of figures out there. Now, while in modern times with it, there aren't as many because we've gotten lazy. Uh, there are still a lot. There are still a lot of people out there who actually believe in liberty. It's just the fact is there's not many in government anymore. I mean, for people that defend the Constitution in uh, the legislature, I've found uh, what was it five people who actually have a ninety plus percent score of actually uh, of actually defending the Constitution and that's not good and that's the current that's the current group while there are some people that are uh, well there are a few people that have an 80 plus percentage score that's not good with it there's uh, there's people who used to be uh, good but they're not uh, they've actually let their score drop and that's pathetic that they've been basically that they've completely sold out and we should be uh, we should be willing to actually die for liberty and if you're willing to do that with it if there's more and more people that whole group with it they can't take them out because there's too many people and if you have a bunch of different types of skills with it they can't uh, they can't take you out because they can say oh but we have these drones well when you have when you have hackers out there with it, they can start grounding those drones very easily, and they don't have the ability to uh, to use those drones for uh, any purpose. So they can't do anything without that. 
and when you have those uh they can say oh but well, we can send our military after you well if that military goes you know what we're standing up to the constitution we're standing for the constitution we're not going to do this and when everybody tends to basically believe in liberty over believing in tyranny eventually they can't do anything and nobody uh, and nobody will die with it because of this and it doesn't matter with it nobody's going to be dying for uh dying for any of this if we actually all stand up if we don't stand up there's going to be a lot of people that die for no reason now if you like this video like subscribe click the notification bell make sure you share this all the way on social media make sure you check her out check out my patreon page if you can't donate make sure this you give this to somebody else who can and that's about it and see you guys later for my nightly uh uh, live stream and that's about it bye everyone